Huawei's subsidiary chip maker, HiSilicon, can only design chips but isn't capable of manufacturing them. According to the American sanctions, all foundries' production of chips for HiSilicon ended on September 15, 2020. In 2021, various signs showed that Huawei's chip inventory was depleted. HiSilicon was struggling to supply Huawei's high-end 5G phones. In August 2021, Huawei released the P50 series. It was Huawei's flagship smartphone with the highest spec and latest features. A Chinese cell phone repair shop disassembled the newly launched model. Usually, a cell phone CPU has two layers, but the video shows that the CPU part of the phone has a unique three-layer stacking design. The man dissecting the phone speculated that it was probably because Huawei could no longer acquire its dedicated CPU, the Kirin 9000, so it resorted to a three-layer patch. The Kirin 9000 processor is a product of high silicone, thus it's fair to assume that its previous DRAM chips for cell phones that are dedicated to Kirin 9000 processors might have run out of stock, therefore discontinued due to the US ban as well. In addition, Huawei cell phones have returned from the 5G era to the 4G era because of the lack of 5G radio frequency chips. In order for a cell phone to support 5G, it needs an SOC chip with a 5G baseband as well as an additional 5G RF chip whose core component, filter technology, is monopolized by the Americans. So the Huawei P50, with a price tag of more than 1200 US dollars in China, and sold as part of a premium phone series, is actually just a 4G phone. On December 24, 2021, market research firm Strategy Analytics released a report showing that the global smartphone application processor AP Market revenue grew by 17% in the third quarter of 2021. The top five companies were Qualcomm, Apple, MediaTek, Samsung LCI, and ZTE. As a chip design company under Huawei, High Silicon has been sanctioned by the United States for only a year and a half since 2019. Yet its ability to produce high-end chips has been greatly hindered in the third quarter of 2021, its smartphone application processor shipments plummeted 96%. It can be said that the blow from the United States has been precise. In May 2019, the U.S. put Huawei on the entity sanctions list, which prevents U.S. companies from supplying products to Huawei without obtaining permission from the Department of Commerce. The sanctions were limited to the software at the time. For example, Google stopped working with Huawei and discontinued its GMS license to Huawei. As a result, Huawei lost access to Android updates. At that time, the U.S. also had a rule prohibiting Huawei from importing products with U.S. technology content higher than 25%. However, Taiwan's leading foundry, TSMC, managed to circumvent this 25% restriction and continued to manufacture chips for Huawei as a proxy. To close this loophole, on May 15, 2020, the Department of Commerce introduced new regulations requiring that any chips produced using U.S. technology and equipment must first be approved by the U.S. before being sold to Huawei. Almost all chip factories around the world, including China's leading foundry manufacturer, SMIC, and Taiwan's TSMC, buy equipment from the same equipment manufacturers led by U.S. companies. This way, all semiconductor factories that are foundries for Huawei need to be approved by the U.S. government before selling to Huawei. High Silicon used to be TSMC's second largest customer at some point in 2020, but in 2021, it disappears from TSMC's top 10 customer list. In manufacturing chips, the lithography machine is critical. Huawei's Kirin 9000 chip is the most advanced 5 nanometer process. Only the lithography machine of the Dutch company ASML can meet the requirements, and this company has deep American capital and technical background. Therefore, all companies that use lithography machines are subject to the U.S. ban. In addition, the chip design requires the use of software called EDA, and EDA design is mainly monopolized by three American companies. These three companies have a combined share of 64% of the global market. As a result, High Silicon is also constrained in chip design. Huawei's consumer business CEO once voiced his regret that High Silicon had only done chip design without getting into chip manufacturing. 
But the truth is that advanced chip manufacturing is one of the most complex manufacturing processes ever devised. In recent years, the Chinese Communist Party has spent huge amounts of money to catch up with the world's most advanced semiconductor companies and hasn't been successful. At present, Huawei has raised the alarm of many countries in the world. Its rapid growth is said to be based not on its own R&D and creative capabilities, but on sophisticated and stealthy theft. The U.S. ban is linked to U.S. accusations that Huawei is engaged in espionage. Some U.S. officials say Huawei makes equipment that secretly retains the ability to access the network through a backdoor interface without the operator's knowledge. The backdoor was designed to give Huawei and Communist Party law enforcement agencies secret access to mobile networks around the world through a backdoor. High Silicone was founded in 2004 during the honeymoon period between China and the United States when the American government supported Beijing's accession to the General Agreement on Tariffs and Trade. But Huawei's founder anticipated that there might be changes from the U.S. in the future. This isn't surprising, as Mr. Ren knows more clearly than anyone else how his company runs and thrives. In an internal email dated May 17, 2019, the president of High Silicon revealed, that many years ago, Huawei had anticipated the day when all advanced chips and technologies from the U.S. would be unavailable, and that high silicone was built as a spare tire for the company's survival. On Huawei's official website, the Voice of the Community published a memo. It reads, in 2004, Ren Zhongfei told the president of high silicone, I'll give you 400 million U.S. dollars a year for research and development and 20,000 people. You must stand up and reduce the dependence on the United States appropriately. The chip is temporarily useless, but we should still continue to do it. The quality of cell phone chips produced by high silicone in the past 10 years wasn't very good until the Kirin 950 SoC chip was launched in 2015. In 2018, high silicone's revenue reached over 7.5 billion US dollars, ranking fifth in the global fabless IC design company review list. In the first quarter of 2020, High Silicon became the first company in mainland China to rank among the top 10 semiconductor companies in the world. The surge in High Silicon's revenue was largely due to Huawei, as 90% of its products went to Huawei. Huawei's cell phone business has seen high revenue growth over the past decade or so. Huawei's annual reports show that revenue from its consumer business, mainly cell phones, had been the largest source of revenue and profit for Huawei since 2018, accounting for 54.4% in 2019. That is, before the U.S. sanctioned Huawei, more than half of every dollar earned by Huawei came from cell phones. The track record of Huawei in high silicon, as well as public accusations against Huawei by a number of governments in other countries, show that the cell phone business had not only earned Huawei large sums of money, and infiltrated both Chinese and overseas societies in stolen private data. It also directly absorbed the chips developed by Huawei and advanced Huawei's development in the chip sector. As we mentioned earlier, because of the U.S. ban, the first two years of Huawei's stockpile of chips were depleted, and the shipments of high silicone chips plummeted 96%. In addition, the Google GMS service is the core and standard configuration of the Android system for overseas cell phones. Since Google stopped licensing GMS, it has made it almost impossible for Huawei phones to remain viable in overseas markets. As a result, Huawei branded phones are now shrinking rapidly in both the international and mainland China markets. According to market research firm CounterPoint, Huawei ranked first in the global smartphone market share in the second quarter of 2020. By the fourth quarter of 2021, its share of the global market was only 2%, ranking 11th. Huawei's cellular business now relies heavily on the mainland China market. In the Chinese market, Huawei's sales have fallen just as sharply due to its inability to produce 5G phones. According to market research firm Canalis, Huawei's cell phone sales fell to roughly 15 million units in the first quarter of 2021, plunging 50% year-on-year, and slumped to close to 10 million units in the second quarter, down 75% year-on-year, dropping out of the top five in China. So does it mean that Huawei is on its last legs? 
If that is your guess, you have underestimated how well the Chinese Communist Party has managed to circumvent the American sanctions. First, let's look at one of the most notable cases, the Honor cell phone brand. In November 2020, Huawei sold its main cell phone brand, Honor, to the Chinese state-controlled company. After leaving Huawei, Honor successfully acquired SOC 5G chips from Taiwanese company MediaTek and US-based Qualcomm, both of which are global leaders in wireless chips. As a result, Honor Mobile has made a comeback in China, and its overseas version has also regained the Google GMS license and is about to return to overseas markets. According to CounterPoint October 2021 data, Honor Mobile sales which were separated from Huawei, entered the top three in China for the first time in the third quarter of 2021, surpassing Xiaomi and Apple in share and nearly doubling its results from the second quarter, a 96% surge. In October 2021, Republican U.S. Senator Marco Rubio called on the Biden administration to blacklist Huawei's breakaway company, Honor, as well. Rubio described Honor as essentially an arm of the Chinese government with newly unfettered access to the same prized U.S. technology currently denied to Huawei and it poses a threat to U.S. national security. Secondly, Huawei's phones are now more in the shadows. For example, the TD Tech N8 Pro is a 5G phone. It was in Huawei's official flagship store in Jingdong for a few days before it was suddenly taken off the shelves. The TD Tech N8 Pro phone not only resembles Huawei's main model, Nova 8 Pro 5G phone, in appearance and configuration, it's also equipped with Huawei's own Kirin chip. Previously, the Kirin chip developed by Huawei has never been sold externally. The official website of the manufacturer of the TD Tech N8 Pro phones shows that its holding company is a joint venture, TD Tech Holding Limited. According to the history on its website, TD Tech has a total investment of over 300 million US dollars and two shareholders. One is Huawei with 49% shareholding and the other is Nokia Siemens Networks with 51%. The information has now been removed from the website. That is to say, TD Tech Mobile has acquired key 5G components such as 5G RF chips that Huawei now can't. Third, a number of small companies in China have gone public recently with a variety of 5G phones tailored by Huawei. For example, Shenzhen Jikati launched a customized Huawei explosion-proof cell phone equipped with 5G chips from High Silicone. Shenzhen Jikati's official website describes itself as a high-tech company focusing on explosion-proof equipment for the chemical and petroleum industries. Oddly, the Huawei customized cell phones launched by Jakati have the logo of Honor printed on the body, and the Honor cell phone brand was already spun off from Huawei in November 2020. Fourth, on December 2, 2021, China Post and Telecommunications Equipment Group, or PTAC, officially released the new High Nova 9 series. The new model's exterior is basically the same as the Huawei Nova 9 series. High Nova 9 is equipped with a Qualcomm chip, not a Huawei Kirin chip. PTAC is a state-owned enterprise of the Chinese Communist Party. According to the data of Tianyan Cha, a Chinese enterprise credit platform, PTAC is also one of the investors in Shenzhen, Zhexin, the holding company that took over Honor. Bloomberg reported earlier that Huawei was considering licensing its designs to PTAC as a way to circumvent a U.S. trade ban. Fifth, in addition to PTAC, Huawei's most important corporate customers in mainland China are the three largest telecom providers in China. These carriers have also launched new 5G-enabled cell phones in 2021, which are almost identical to Huawei's main brands from appearance to configuration. These phones include China's Unicom's U-Magic series, China Mobile's Endzone series, and China Telecom's MyMong series of 5G phones. These new 5G phones from China's three major telecom providers aren't equipped with a Kirin chip from High Silicone, but have 5G chips from MediaTek or Qualcomm. However, they use Huawei's Android system and support Huawei accounts and cloud space. All these phones are sold on Huawei's official website and flagship store. 
it's clear that Huawei is still trying to find ways to obtain high-end chips from overseas against the backdrop of a dying dream of making its own chips. The way it does it can be described in a Chinese phrase, a cicada sloughing off its skin, an escape by strategy or escape by cunning maneuvering. Huawei's many partners in the cell phone field have provided a loophole to exploit. In particular, those cooperating companies existing in Huawei's industrial chain that are neither held by Huawei nor have any unusual trade records are usually not noticed by U.S. regulators. This was an announcement made by Huawei's founder in November 2021, which shows his determination to fight till the end. I think peace is obtained by war. We have to fight hard and sacrifice a lot to create a peaceful environment for the next 30 years so that no one dares to bully us again. These actions by Huawei show that the company or the Chinese Communist Party behind the company never intended to tell the Chinese, including Huawei employees, the truth about the U.S. ban. In the face of this predicament, they have raised the banner of nationalism in an attempt to escape the U.S. embargo and will continue to declare war on the U.S. and other Western countries.